But what is it that gives meaning to our life? What is it that makes our life profitable? What is it that is in our greatest self-interest? It's Krishna, our relationship with Krishna. And what is it that's vyatikrama, vyatikrama? Vyatikrama mean, means an obstruction. What is the obstruction to that self-interest? Yad adhi anyasya prayastvam atmana svavyatikramat. There's no greater obstruction than this than to think something else more pleasing than Krishna consciousness or one's own self-realization. There's no stronger obstruction to one's self-interest than thinking other subject matters to be more pleasing than one's self-realization. Uh, preya stvam. Preya means more interesting, more dear. Preya comes from priya, something more, more dear, more interesting, more pleasing. Self-realization, that's all right. Krishna consciousness, that's all right. But there are other things that are more important, or other things that come first, other things that I like more, other things that I'd, I'd rather do than chant Hare Krishna, than read Srimad Bhagavatam, than be engaged in, in service. There's something else. You just wait a minute, let me do this first, and then I'll... From another... It's also called distraction. The distraction presents the illusion of being um, more interesting or more, more urgent, more immediate, more in, in meaningful. And so it becomes a distraction. And no greater obstruction, no stronger obstruction to one's self-interest than thinking other subject matters. What are other subject matters? In the second canto, it said that any other subject matter is maya. Krishna is the absolute truth. And anything outside of Krishna doesn't exist. Anything that we see as having, not having a relationship with Krishna, as being separate from Krishna, yata bhasha yata tam. It doesn't really exist. It has no substantial existence. And yet we think that these other things, that is to say that maya, is more pleasing than Krishna. That something else is more urgent, more attractive, more to my self-interest, more pleasing than being engaged in Krishna's service. This is not the realization of those who are advanced. In sixth chapter, Bhagavad Gita, yam labdva chapram lavam manyate nadikam tataha yasmin stato dadukena guru napi vichalyate. The when one actually is situated on the platform of Krishna consciousness, yam labdva, having gained that Krishna consciousness, aparam labha manyate na, adi, na adikam tataha. He thinks there's no greater gain than this. Nothing is better than this. He's not distracted. Just Haridas Thakur, the prostitute is coming at the dead of night uh, to entice him. But he's chanting Hare Krishna. He's thinking nothing is better than this. So he's not attracted. Whereas other worldly men, they'd certainly be attracted. That's all right, you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, but this girl is a knockout. Where will I get an opportunity like this? So the, the great souls, the those who are advanced, Yam Labdva, because they're getting always newer and newer pleasure in the service of Krishna, they're not attracted to other things. 
yes, Minister Toe. And even if there's uh, pain, even if there's misery, that doesn't distract them either. Yes, Minister Toe, na dukena guru api vichalyate. That doesn't shake them because they're convinced that there's there's nothing greater, there's nothing better. There, it's elsewhere it's described that, what is that? Yon tat kontara ramas tatantar jyoti reva Sayogi paramam paranirvana pramabhu like that, kalpate. That within themselves, they're anta sukantara rama. They're enjoying transcendental pleasure. Ramante yogi no anante satchananda chidatmani iti rama padena so param brahma vidhiyate. The absolute truth is also known as Ram because the transcendentalists derive unlimited pleasure from that personality of Godhead. So they don't think. Yeah, all right, this, but there's something more, something I want to do when I finish my rounds, something I want to do when I get some time off. Something for Krishna, something for me. Anya asya prayastvam yet adhi. There's something higher, something more pleasing, more interesting. No. Srila Prabhupada says, human life is especially meant for self-realization. Self refers to the super self and the individual self, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the living entity. When, however, one becomes more interested in the body and bodily sense gratification. He creates for himself obstructions on the path of self-realization. By the influence of Maya, one becomes more interested in sense gratification, which is prohibited in this world for those interested in self-realization. Instead of becoming interested in sense gratification, one should divert his activities to satisfy the senses of the Supreme Soul. Anything performed contrary to this principle certainly against one's self-interest. So the other thing, prayastva, anyasya prayastva, is maya the appearance of something that's going to give me greater happiness, greater joy, greater benefit, greater meaning in my life, but doesn't. It has to do with the body, the gross body, the subtle mind. It has to do with the, that which is in relationship to my body, my wife, my husband, my children, my home, my possessions, even those things which are, what can you, this is a natural part of human life to have a family, to have possessions. But if one starts to think that these are more important than Krishna and Krishna consciousness, even that becomes an obstruction to self-realization. One starts to think, this is who I am. I'm this body. This is my wife. These are my children. My husband. This is my car. This is my home. Janasya Mohoya Mahamameti. And one loses sight of the real purpose of life. One becomes involved in something which is meaningless. Why is it meaningless? 
adyanta vanta kontiyana te shurama te buddha. Because it, it will come to an end. It has a beginning, it has an end. And therefore the intelligent person doesn't invest there. Or, or yes, but with the, the under this is simply uh, my duty and this is supportive. It's meant to be supportive of my Krishna consciousness. It's not a suit or something of greater value or a greater source of happiness. The householders who think that they'll enjoy greater happiness from their, their own relationship, their own love, than they will from loving Krishna are in illusion and are headed for disappointment and frustration if they're not already there. This family happiness is not the real happiness of the soul. It has its place, but it's not the purpose of life. It's not the, the meant to be the, the, the central point of one's existence. Those who make the family relationship, the central point of the, their existence are called griha medhis. Srila Prabhupada explained this griha medhi, griha medhi word one time. He said one meaning is that medhi means meti. The, the, when, the, in the, when we have grains and we have an ox or a team of oxen to uh, thresh the grain. And so how does it work? They're tied to a pole and they're walked in a circle, treading the grains under their feet. So they walk around in that circle in that circle and gradually the, the grains are uh, um, threshed. So that pole Prabhupada said, is Meiti. One meaning of Meiti is a pole, and especially that pole, the pole to which a bull is tied for walking around in that circle. So those who make the family relationship, or specifically sex life, the center of their life, are called Griha Meitis. And they will not be happy. They're thinking something else more important or more immediate, more pleasing, more interesting, more meaningful in, than spiritual realization. And that obstructs their real mission in human life. Whereas the grahastas also live with family members, but their central point is Krishna. Their Krishna conscious householders usually keep a deity of the Lord in the home and have kirtan for the deity, offer their all food to the deity, and they have Krishna discussion about the deity so that the understanding is there that Krishna is the real center of our life. Then the children get that understanding. Everyone gets that understanding. And then the home is called Grasta Ashram, a place of spiritual culture, because everyone makes progress toward understanding their own eternal nature and understanding the personality of Godhead then understanding the relationship between themselves and the Lord and acting in that relationship. Acting in that relationship means devotional service under the guidance of the bona fide spiritual master so that one's natural eternal 
healthy nature comes out. Our unhealthy nature, in our unhealthy nature, we're thinking of sense gratification. But in our healthy state, we're thinking of giving pleasure to Krishna. So that healthy life comes out by practicing Krishna consciousness under the spiritual master's guidance so that one gets a, gets freed from unwanted things in the heart and one's natural attraction for Krishna is Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhyuka Bhunai Shrabhanadi Shuddha Chitte Kodiye Udai This attraction for Krishna is already there within everyone but by hearing, by chanting, by these spiritual activities, that natural propensity to love Krishna is revived. That spirit of loving Krishna is most fully displayed in Goloka Vrindavan. In Goloka Vrindavan, everyone is mad after Krishna. And no one is feeling unfulfilled. No one is feeling yeah, this is all right, but when will I get a chance to check out my Facebook feed? Or no one is, is feeling that, all right, but I've been doing this now for two hours or, or two weeks. When am I going to get some time to myself? Their love for Krishna is undivided and their happiness is undivided. The whole Vrindavan is in transcendental ecstasy because everyone is always absorbed in thinking of Krishna, chanting about Krishna, hearing about Krishna, serving Krishna. So the whole Vrindavan atmosphere is freed from anxieties and filled with ecstasy. That's the healthy condition of the living being. The coward boys, the mother just showed them my Nanda Maharaj, the Gopas, the Gopis, everyone, even the, the land, the peacocks, the Jamuna, everyone is just overwhelmed by love for Krishna. And even in this world, the, the great souls, the Goswamis, uh, Gopi Bhavara Samrita, Gopi Bhavara Samrita, Dilahari Kalola Magno Maho, uh, Gopi Bhavara Samrita. Madhurima, what is that? Some mohito. Um, so Madhurima and Dana, some mohito. They were just overwhelmed with ecstatic love for Krishna. Here they are living practically like beggars. The Kantashrito, they were wearing just some stitched together quilt and uh, torn cloth. So they outwardly it seemed, it seemed like just beggars and living without much material, not eating very much, not sleeping very much, no, no very comfortable place to stay. But they were absorbed in the mood of the inhabitants of Vrindavan. That was their, their life. Oh uh, yeah, there's the, the bulls. They were absorbed in these wonderful qualities and activities of Krishna with ecstatic love. So they, they'd been rich men. Raghunath Das Goswami was the son of a only son of uh, great Zamandars. Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, important chief government ministers. They were surrounded by aristocratic men and they had so much opulence. But Tuchjavat, they considered it practically insignificant. Insignificant. Why? Because they're absorbed in the transcendental pleasing activities of devotional service. Not only pleasing, more than pleasing, uh, fully absorbing, fully ecstatic. Pleasing doesn't do justice to what, what they were experiencing. They were 
experiencing such ecstasy, they were practically like madmen. Hey Rade, Brajade, Vike, Chalabite, Hey Nanda, Shuna, Buddha, Sri Govardhan, Kopapada, Patale, Kalindi, Bani, Kuta, Koshanta, Viti Sarvato, Brajapure, K Dharma, Yulu, Vande, Rupa, Sanatana, Rukuyago, Sri Jiva, Gopalako. So these Goswamis set the example of love for Krishna, where they manifest in, in this world, such love for Krishna. What is our little life of two cars in the garage and a VCR and a microwave oven compared to what the Goswamis were enjoying? They didn't, even, they didn't have any of those things. No car, no microwave, no VCR, no nothing. And, but what was their happiness? Happiness. Our happiness is like a little drop and their happiness was like an ocean. So how are they getting such happiness? By being fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada sometimes said that the goal of the Krishna consciousness movement is to become mad after Krishna. That's our purpose, to become mad after Krishna. But that's not possible to sense gratification. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if one is always going here and there to satisfy his tongue or his belly, his genitals, then where's the question of Krishna? Then we're simply thinking about eating, sim simply thinking about sex, simply thinking about sleeping, simply thinking about so many other things. So, but if we're absorbed in thinking of Krishna, then we forget about these other things, practically forget. It becomes automatic. We do what we need to do, but it's not our focus. Prabhupada gave the example that there's some businessman and he's got a file in his work and he's opening the file and looking at something and closing the file drawer. And then again, sometime later, opening a file, closing the file. But how important is it to him, this business, opening the drawer, closing the drawer, opening the door, closing the drawer? It's just automatic. He doesn't think about it, that now I'm opening the drawer. It's just automatically. He, 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 he gets the file, he, he opens the door, he closes the, the door of the, of the file. So for the person advanced in Krishna consciousness, he does all the things he needs to do. He eats, he sleeps, he performs his prescribed duties, but it's all secondary. The businessman isn't thinking about opening the file drawer, closing the file drawer. He's thinking about how he can make a profit, how he can close a deal. He's not thinking about opening and closing the drawer. That's just, okay, because the file is in the drawer, you open the drawer. So the Krishna conscious person, he maintains the body, he does everything. But his focus, his purpose, what gives meaning and, and happiness to his life is Krishna consciousness. That Krishna consciousness doesn't have to be solitary. One doesn't have to become a recluse. One can perform and one is recommended to perform Krishna consciousness in association of others with family members, with devotees. not in seclusion. So then that happiness increases. Anandam buddhivardhanam, pradipadam purnamrita shadhanam. So that one feels increasing happiness more and more. The ocean of bliss that increases. The material ocean doesn't increase, but the ocean of Krishna conscious happiness increases anandam buddhi vardhanam 
pratipadam at every step. Purnamrita shadana, so that one can taste the full nectar. It becomes like the benediction moon, the full moon of Krishna consciousness. The moon starts, starts off like a little sliver, gets a little bigger, gets a little bigger, gets a little bigger. When it becomes full moon, then it's so bright. So this is the effect of chanting Hare Krishna with seriousness, with focus. What is that? If you have a sayatmika buddhi, so the Krishna conscious person is is focused on on serving Krishna, and everything he does contributes to that purpose. Everything he does is connected to that purpose. That's the main purpose, and everything else fits in. Everything has its place in relationship to that main purpose the family life the the job the education the whatever it is it's there in relationship to krishna and to to be to be used for the service of krishna then it has meaning otherwise if i think this is my you know, krishna consciousness is my duty but this is my pleasure then he's a fool because he's giving up the greater pleasure, the giving up the real pleasure for the reflection of pleasure, for the, the false appearance of pleasure. And he'll be disappointed and frustrated. But the person who keeps Krishna always in the forefront, his life becomes happy in, in all respects. Prophet said he becomes happy in this life as well as in the next. So this is our, our purpose. And we want to, what is that? Anukulyasya sankalpa, pratikulyasya varjana. This is surrender, practical surrender. Not just, oh, I surrender. Today I surrender and then tomorrow, I, yeah, I, I surrendered yesterday, but then I'm, I'm back to normal. Business as usual. But this is practical progressive surrender. What is that? Anukulyasya sankalpa. To accept what's favorable for Krishna consciousness. Hearing, chanting, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, serving the Lord in so many ways. Anukulyasya sankalpa. To be determined to serve Krishna. And pratikul yasya varjanam. And to leave aside whatever may get in the way of, of spiritual progress. Especially four things are very destructive to spiritual progress. Gambling, intoxicants, meat eating, illicit sex. These are all very... powerful blocks to spiritual advancement. And on the positive side, the so favorable is the chanting of Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So we should go on chanting Hare Krishna, giving up step by step, step by step, so many unnecessary necessities and giving up the illusion that these unnecessary necessities will give us real happiness. The real happiness is on the platform of the soul in its eternal relationship with Krishna. All right, maybe I'll stop here and see what kind of questions there might be. Comments. If any.
if no comments maras there is a, no questions but there is a, a grahastha and grahame the prabhupada explains in that uh, second canto beginning srota vyadini rajendra nunam santi sahasra apasyatam atma tatva gruhesh grahame dina prabhupada was explaining about the envious nature and always comparing about other family oh, he has bmw he has this house he has this that and uh, jealousy and enviousness so that is what is called grahamedi and the grahastha is situated more is not comparing and is satisfied with what he got so, <laughs> so yes the if i'm envious envy doesn't feel good in the heart envy also creates agitation creates burning in the heart it doesn't lead to happiness and suppose i get the things that i'm envy- envying then others are envying me that becomes a source of unhappiness although i may think yes they're all envious of me but that doesn't make anyone happy that doesn't make anyone happy the happiness comes from serving krishna yeah, in the material world everyone is and envious or hostile to everyone else because everyone's in competition with everyone else if if you get the contract i don't get the contract if you get the job i don't get the job therefore everyone is more or less competing with everyone else but the krishna conscious person is the well wisher of all others and his heart therefore becomes uh, pure and he enjoys real happiness this is question from vina mata ji yeah hari krishna ma guru maharaj uh to You're this point <laughs> no actually both are here <laughs> how are you guru maharaj mm-hmm. uh so nice lecture um the question is to this point of purity uh, the living entity or jiva is basically situated in this kind of a constitutional glory where he begins this transcendental and uh, like uh, happiness uh, beyond time and material energy right so he can only give this to when this happens only when he give the misconception as you said of i and mine that's when he can fully manifest into a pure self right right so i i was more curious on hitting this point where there are different variables of this false identification at the different stages of our life as you rightly mm-hmm. said whether it is grossta or brahmachari or there will be certain false identification due to some kind of a pressure oh i have to prove this i have this responsibility i have the, every time i comes or mine comes whether it is subtle power or subtle maya energy which is pulling us towards it so how to understand this mistaken sense of ownership what we have we have to develop the real sense of iness just to try to chip away at the false ego will be a an term term interminably long project and not likely to succeed that's the the buddhist project or the mayavadi project to have just to dismantle that stubborn false ego but better to one's real ego one's real identity situated in my real identity then the false identity is automatically gone if the to, to imagine the darkness independently the darkness when the sun is there when when the light is there if you just try to imagine you're in a dark room and you want to chase out the darkness that's not going to work you have to bring in the light then automatically the darkness disappears so when we bring in krishna consciousness krishna consciousness means i have my identity one time satsrup rajesh prabhupad in a humble mood uh, swamiji he had nothing 
And Prabhupada said, you're not nothing. You're something. You're not what you think you are. You're not this body. But you're some are an eternal servant of Krishna. So that identity, Jivar Shwarupoy Krishna Nitya Das, that I'm the eternal servant of Krishna, that identity I have to resume. Itvanyata Rupam Swarupena Vivastiti. This is real liberation. To give up my false identity by taking up my real identity. If I try just to get rid of my false identity, my false sense of possessiveness, my false this and my false that, it will be a long, slow project. But when I take up my real engagement and my real understanding of who I am, then automatically the false understanding recedes at the same time, at the same pace. Therefore, the chanting is so important. The chanting brings us to the platform, to the spiritual platform, to the Krishna conscious platform. The, the Buddhists are actually quite good at analyzing all the little ins and outs of the mind, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're impressed with Buddhism, you know, people, they're sitting around meditating on the mind so long. So they've got all these insights to the tricks that the mind plays and the, the different things that are going on there. But stopping the mind is not possible. The Buddhists ultimately are stuck with, with the body and the mind. They can't, they can observe it, they can try to curb it, but they can't get free fully because they don't come to their real identity. Real identity is Krishna's servant. Prabhupada gave the example, man's in the hospital. So he's got some serious disease, then he takes the medicine, he's cured. But he's not actually cured till he gets out of the bed and resumes his normal activities. Then he's cured. Just lying convalescent in the bed is not healthy life. So we want to come to that healthy, healthy life. So that's all made possible by Krishna Kirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Rama, 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 Rama. Is that all right? Thank you, Guruji. Thank you. Something else? If no, the question is there another similar to following uh, to follow this Maharaj, mm -hmm. about the submissiveness. <clears throat> Wait a second, excuse me. Sorry for that. No I thought I'd told you to be quiet, but didn't listen to me. Uh, just follow up to this Guru Maharaj. Uh, the submissiveness, how much uh, we have to, it is not sufficient, right? Like we submissive, it all depends on, it all depends, it's a proportionate to the faith and the mm. austerity we do, right? Mm. And in our sense, the austerity we do is sufficient at our level, but it is fully not sufficient. You, you see the proportionate and that again is dependent on how much submissive we are. So how to correlate this these three terms, Guru Maharaj, like how to gauge ourselves on a daily basis, like how much submissive we are and how much of proportionate uh, faith we will be having and how much we are doing kind of austerity towards that path. Faith and submission are more important than austerity. Okay. We want to increase our faith and submission to the highest possible point. Austerity, we don't imagine we're, we could do, can do that way. Okay. Austerity is good, but we can't, Swamis, we can't perform severe tapasya. It's very difficult. Austerity is good, we should perform, but austerity as prescribed 
Acharya by the spiritual master that we should take up the, uh, that to become more and more austere. Good if we can become more and more austere, but that's not the our program. But to in, advance in faith, to advance in devotion, that's our real focus. And to the extent that austerity will help us with that, good. When we can try to increase our austerity, that's nice. But not the same way that we want to increase our faith. We want to increase our faith unlimitedly. <laughs> but our austerity, to some extent. So faith increases with submissiveness, right? Submissiveness, what is that? Yasya bhakti, yasya deve para bhakti yata deve tathaguro. Yes, it has full faith in Krishna and equal professional master. Then all the Vedic knowledge is revealed. So progressively follow the instructions given us by our spiritual master act to serve with devotion we'll get progressive realization. The more our realization increases, the more our faith increases. Mm -hmm. The more our faith increases, the more our this increases, and they all come together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Something else? Good morning, a follow up on that. Uh, for our faith, Shraddha, to go to the stage of Nishta, we have this anartha nivritti which has to happen. <clears throat> How do we uh, go about weeding out all the unnecessarily desires which we may know that they are in within us or we may not even know that they are within us? I was thinking about that today. Of course, one answer is by constant chanting, because this is our uh, sarvatma snapanam, complete bath, to chant Hare Krishna so that all the unwanted things will be washed away. That's really the, the chief answer. Um, another answer I was thinking about, the more we increase our appreciation of devotees and our loving dealings with devotees. Because the more we do that, the more the heart becomes softened, the heart becomes pure, the heart becomes enlivened, Krishna becomes pleased. By service to the devotees, by loving exchanges with the devotees. What is that mool, sadhusanga? Krishna bhakti mool, sadhusanga? like that. The association of devotees is so important. It's the, the root of everything. So yeah. we should learn how to associate with the devotees in a at least cooperative mood, but even more in an appreciative and, and grateful and, and loving mood. Is that okay? That will help us. Prabhupada said, love me, love my dog. Of course, the devotion and love for the spiritual master is especially, or especially wanted. In relationship to the spiritual master and in relationship to Krishna, all the other devotees. Otherwise, one remains prakrita bhakta. What is that? Archaye. Yep, Pujam, Sraddaya, I heard it. Pujam, Sraddaya, I heard it. Nabaktesh, Chanyeshu. Chanyeshu. Nabaktesh, Chanyeshu. Yeah, but I heard an interesting commentary on that verse. Bhakteshu, Chanyeshu. Bhakteshu, Chanyeshu. He worships the deity, third class devotee. He worships the deity, but he doesn't have 
appreciation for bhakti for other devotees. Just me and Krishna, me and the and the deities, me and Radha Shamsundar, me and whichever my deity is. That's the extent of his realizations. That's Krishna consciousness. He's thinking of Krishna. But the other devotees are not in, in the picture. He's called a neophyte. But there's another way of reading Bhakteshu Cha Anyeshu. Bhakteshu Cha Anyeshu. He doesn't see the other devotees. He doesn't consider or care about the other devotees or Anyeshu, other people. He doesn't care about the innocent people, the those who are not Krishna conscious, those who are suffering. It's just me and Krishna. He doesn't care about the other devotees or about Balasheshu, the, the innocent. So therefore he's called a neophyte. And second class devotee, what's the verse? Isare Sutta Dadineshu Bali Sheshu Maitri Krupa Maitri Upeksha Sa Maitri Prema Krito Upeksha. Yeah. So loves the Lord, he makes friendships with us, he is merciful to the people who are in consciousness. And he ignores rascals and, and demons. He doesn't waste his time with them. This is the, the platform of second class. Prabhupada said, third class comes, first class comes by the mercy of Krishna. We can't force that. At least we should become class. Don't remain third class, Prabhupada said. Madhya Madhikar is, is really our standard to be to appreciate Krishna, to love Krishna, to be friends with the devotees, to be merciful to the innocent, and the hell with the demons. <laughs> we'll, we'll ignore them. Is there anything else? Okay. Thank you. There's three minutes left, but I don't get paid by the minute anyway. <laughs> There's nothing else we can stop here. Announce Marupati or any yeah. other word. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. For Thank you, Marupati. A wonderful class and hearing from you. It's so nice. Your kindness. Uh, Coming announcements, uh, <clears throat> coming Tuesday is uh, Ekadasi, Pandav Nijala Ekadasi. So we will be having Ekadasi Kirtan uh, on Zoom. We'll be sending you the Zoom link. Uh, <clears throat> also starting from tomorrow, uh, every day in the morning, uh, we'll have a morning program from 5 to 7 on Zoom. 5 to 6.30 will be Japa, and 6.30 to 7 will be Simad Bhagavatam class. The details of that is already sent out. If you don't have it, please let us know. We can send you that information. Um, <clears throat> so that's Monday to Friday. We'll be doing this morning program. Sunday anyway, we have the mon morning program as part of the Japathon. So please uh, take this wonderful opportunity to virtually associate with devotees and chant and read Chimad Bhagavatam. Um, coming Friday is uh, Jagannath Snan Yatra. Uh, His Holiness Bhakti Pushwata Maharaj is speaking in the evening from 8 to 9. Uh, <clears throat> on Jagannath Snan Yatra. And then we'll be celebrating Jagannath Snan Yatra on Saturday at the temple. Uh, the darshan will be open whole day, uh, 10 to 1. There's a darshan open for everybody uh, where people, uh, devotees can come. Uh, maximum uh, 10 people will be allowed. The 
they can come with mask uh, and uh, the temperature will be measured in the lobby and they'll be allowed to go in. Uh, <clears throat> in the evening from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., there is a Abhishek of the Lord. So we have uh, this RT and Abhishek sponsorship. Uh, family will be allowed to go in uh, and escorted in. They can do RT to Lord Jagannath, Abhishek, and then uh, there will there'll be a packed prasadam for them where our family can take the prasadam and eat uh, either in the car or at home. Just because of the restriction, there's a indoor restriction is 10 people. So one family or two families maximum will be allowed to go in at one time because there will be also volunteers inside. So for uh, if you like to do that sponsorship, you can contact me or Krishna Nampabu and uh, we can give more details. Uh, the Parna time on Wednesday is 5.25 to 10.25 a.m. Sometime. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh, next Sunday, the morning class will be given by His Holiness Prabhupada Saraswati Maharaj. Most probably in the evening, His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj will be the class. It's going to be in New Jersey next weekend. So here will be the class.